Baby. Robin means business. Hashtag Race Home is presented by Audi, Vorsprung, Dirk Technik, Fanatec, Realistic Simulation Hardware, Sony PlayStation, this is for the players. Speedpool, premium content for premium customers. Uptrend, the lifestyle magazine from Abt Sportsline. So welcome again to Race Home. Yeah, it's already almost just two days ago we had a fascinating race on the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Before that we have been ambassadors and Tom Christensen, our co-host. The track we have chosen today or the computer has chosen today is a classic again. Yes, very much so. We are going to, uh, we're going to England and we are going a little bit south of London near a city called Seven Oaks. There we have the, the very famous Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit. It's the one with a lot of elevation changes, some blind corners, and corner names like Paddock Hill, Bend, Druids, Graham Hill, Surtees, Hawthorne, Dingle Dell, Sterling Bend, Clearways, Clark Curve, and then the Brabham Strait. There's a little bit of a dialogue. There's a very sheen corner coming in at the Dingle Dell chicane. And, um, that's fascinating. Uh, circuits which really have to take everything out of the of the drivers and also the setup with the engineers. So um, I'm sure everyone will have worked very hard in the little time they have to get used to the chosen track. Nico Müller has been winning three races in a row, but today he will not be winning because unfortunately he is not with us. Here we see the championship standing, so he will keep his championship lead because his advantage is so big. And in the team standings, of course, Audi Sport team up Sportsline will keep P1 after this race too. Um, but we explain you what happened to Nico Müller, why he's not racing with us today. After winning three races in a row, championship leader Nico Müller is missing today due to clashing commitments. Standing in for him is Kelvin van der Linde. For a second time, the victory in the weekly design contest goes to Japan, courtesy of Mayumi Shiraishi, who will challenge our very own Bettina Schola. Yellow cards have been handed to Robin Freins and Loic Duval after their incidents in the last round at the Nordschleife. Guest driver today, Cassio Cortez, co-host of a YouTube show in Brazil. Mike Rockefeller is facing a challenge today. He'll be racing from his parents' home tonight and thus has to rely on a controller. Now we are downstairs in the living room of my parents and uh, as you can see, here's my little setup for tonight. Uh, it's a TV, laptop for the camera, um, of course my, my new steering wheel, um, the controller right there, and then of course the perfect race seat. So uh, no, I, I think it's good, it's, it's going to be fun, that's what it is about in hashtag race home. Um, that you don't need to be a professional to take part and you don't need uh, professional equipment. So I hope you enjoy the race tonight, uh, have fun and uh, wish me good luck. Thank you. Hashtag Race Home has a unique and compact race format delivering exciting racing. It all starts with three qualifying sprint races. Only the three winners are proceeding directly to the semi-final. Q4 offers a last chance to get the other three spots in the semi-final. The top six contest the semi-final, another sprint race. And it all ends in the super-final, a one-lap shootout of the best two drivers. It's Q1 at Brands Hatch on the GP circuit, going from pole position, Mayumi Shiraisha. Jamie Green should be P4, the unluckiest man in hashtag race home. So the GP circuit awaits our drivers then for this qualifying race here at Brands Hatch. Let's go, guys. Let's go, yeah. 
You should say, let's go racing. It's a great park. And I, I don't see Jamie again. Oh no, not more bad luck for Jamie Green then. So. At his home race as well. Well, Loic Duval certainly getting the best of the start, and he leads going into the right-hander, which is uh, Paddock Hill Bend. Uh, Thomas Vogt is uh, P2, and Mike Rockefeller is knocking on the door of uh, Mayumi already to try and wrestle away that P3 place, and does so with a little tap to the side of uh, Mayumi. Apologies there. Um, there is uh, Mike Rockefeller then elevated to P3. Loic Duval leading from uh, Thomas Vogt then, who is P2. Then it is Mike Rockefeller. They're about to turn left now and uh, make their way onto the GP circuit. And it's a long drag now towards Hawthorne Hill and Hawthorne Bend. Underneath the bridge we go. Mike Rockefeller, of course, from his parents' home, having to work with a controller. I mean, if you're there, maybe you can tell where you are if you're racing. So Tom Christensen trying to check in with the extremely unlucky Jamie Green. Thomas Vogt, look at this, P2. What a great drive from uh, Thomas. Oh, well, that was the commentator's curse, if ever there was one, as Thomas immediately puts it into the gravel. And that means, of course, that uh, Mike Rockefeller is elevated now into P2. Here in replay, I would say that actually Thomas got that wrong as a result of Loic Duval getting very wayward also. What it means is Loic Duval continues to lead. He was able to rescue. Mike Rockefeller is at P2 and Thomas Vogt is now P3. But Mike is chasing here. Mike, wait for me. Uh, he's hardly likely to do that, I would suggest, Mike, as Mike makes his way through uh, Druids then. One of the most difficult corners. And then downhill towards uh, Graham Hill Bend, which is turn number three here on this GP configuration of the Brands Hatch circuit. This is Q1 in our hashtag race home event. And... There is Mike Rockefeller uh, drifting nicely. Oh, nice. That was a nice looking drift. <laughs> good line, huh? Yeah, very good, Mike. I was quite impressed with that. Let's see it again from being on board now. As oh, man. He held on to it beautifully, but lost some valuable tents in his uh, chase towards not easy. Mike Duval. No, not easy, Mike. I completely understand that. You're doing a good job. Very creditable with your controller, but you need to get on terms with this uh, Loic Duval character that is leading the race and leading it by a healthy margin of 2.3 seconds at the moment. And sorry, Mike, did I uh, bounce your concentration? Oh, my mia. <laughs> did it, did it. the grass. Yes, if you could keep off that. I was on that very grass. Respect to the guys with the controller. Uh, just last year, Cut to a uh, courtesy of WRT, who'd lent me a moped to do a tour of the track, and uh, I can't see him. Uh, somehow, I managed to get it all crossed up and locked up and on the grass. Now, the backdrop to Miami is, of course, not Brands Hatch and the uh, Kent countryside. A beautiful backdrop it is. It's okay, Miami. Very tough track. It is a tough track. Well said, yeah. Tom. Uh, come by the Oh, keep it nice and tight if you can down Paddock Hill. Fuji-san, you have in the background, looks good. <laughs> yes. I kind of knew you would pick up on that, Mr. Christensen. Um, it does look good, and of course we were all at uh, the Fuji towards the end of last year for that uh, first uh, uh, DTM Super GT joint race. Right, what can Mike Rockefeller do to try and reel in Loic Duval? Well, at the moment, absolutely nothing. Jamie Green. Please uh, report to the... Oh, so Jamie Green being summoned Jamie Green. to Frank Beeler's office for some reason. I'm on my way. That, of course, will be our race steward, Frank Beeler's uh, virtual office. To where? <laughs> Quite. Um, oh, Mike, what's happening? In that corner every lap. <laughs> yes, indeed, every lap. Oh, well, well, yeah. <laughs> Try and keep it together if you can, and on the tarmac. You're not active, Jamie? You're not racing? Uh. Well... Let's hear from Jamie. Well, no, now we can't hear from Jamie. Completely gone. Yes. Is that you, Mike, or is it Jamie Green? Thomas is doing well in P3. I, I said I noticed. Okay. Uh, so, yes, Jamie, just reaffirming the fact that he isn't racing at the moment. Brexit internet issues. <laughs> Very good line, Mr. Green. Well done, sir. Yeah. Uh, here is Loic Duval then, who's not had too many issues. Well, he had one, didn't he? But he made a save. Duval looks commit. Hey, Loic, wait. I won't pass you. <laughs> yes, Loic, you're going to believe that. Make a photo finish, come on. So there is uh, Loic Duval then. To heck with a photo finish, he says. He puts his uh, metaphoric gas down and... Um, Loic, I would not trust a German on British soil. 
Uh, so Lloyd Duval then has got but a few turns to do. Oh! oh. And makes a Horlix of that, but... Yeah, uh, just... No, it's good. You are in fast, but you out slow. <laughs> yeah. That's always been my problem, huh? Tom Christensen giving him all the encouragement he needs as he tries to head towards the checkered flag. One more turn to do. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Loic. Just focus on the racing, guys. <laughs> And there, the checkered flag, and like Duval is victorious. To finish first, you have to be French in the Q1. And let's hear from our Q1 winner then, like Duval. I mean, I love the track. Uh, the the last times I've been there, I mean, it's always been uh, pretty cool to, to race on that track. Really, an old type circuit, and uh, with the elevation and stuff Andy? like that, it's always cool in in reality. Um, I have to say that uh, for the first time, I didn't try test at all because I had uh, an issue to, to download everything. So I was a bit late uh, to be able to join you guys in the game, but I've uh, been lucky enough not to do mistakes and to start from the front also. This always helps. So all right, pretty cool to, to end up P1. Uh, but to be honest, it would have been nice to do some more laps uh, before the semifinal. You'll be able to do more laps later. I wish you... All the best and a very good start from our French, Loic Duval. Thanks. Congratulations to Loic. And we have seen very interesting guest drivers in the Race Home events so far. And we have a cool guest driver from Brazil this time. And let's see who he is. Hi, everybody. Welcome to my home. I'm ready to race home with you guys. My name is Cassio Cortez. I'm one of the hosts of Acelerados, which is the largest automotive YouTube channel here in Brazil. One of my co-hosts is Rubens Barrichello. I'm definitely not the fastest driver among our channel's hosts, but I've been a racer for uh, my entire career, a journalist slash racer, uh, but I haven't been deep into the sim racing world up until uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. So I do have a bit of a setup here, more targeted towards fun, uh, which is what we're about to have, right? Uh, definitely honored to face the Audi Sports DTM guys, guys like Renner Ross, which I think is one of the best drivers, not in the DTM, but in the world. So I hope to honor the WRT team scholars and our Brazilian uh, racing fans. But above all, we want to help the cause and have some fun to help entertain everybody around the world, around the world watching this race. Somebody's tired. Good to meet you, Cassio. Robin, always. <laughs> no, 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 not me. Not at that time of the day. No, I just woke up, man. He will be going from P1, Cassio Cortez, that yeah. is. Have a good race, have fun. Uh, Robin Fry is looking for his <laughs> uh, pillow for another little nap. He is going from P last. P5. Uh, there is Casio Cortez then, ready to go from uh, P1. Stefan Vachau alongside. Then it's Bjorn Skotka, Renny Rast and Robin Freins as we go racing into our Q2 race here at uh, Brands Hatch. And Casio Cortez then. Uh, Stefan Vachau gets very sideways on the entry to uh, Paddock Hill Bend. Casio Cortez doing a good job. Rene Rast also doing a good job up to P2. We're on board with Robin Freins, who's equally doing a good job up to P3 as Rene takes an interesting line through the Graham Hill bend and that has allowed Robin Freins to get ever close up. Tires squealing then virtually as here comes Robin Freins then who's going to have a go as they head towards Hawthorne Hill. Hey, come on, give me space, man. <laughs> Rene using his uh, blocking techniques perhaps. It's weaving, huh? Yes. I'm weaving to the camera, mate. Oh, well done. Thanks, Rene. Is it weaving or waving? You have to... <laughs> well, it could be either, I guess, but one, of course, makes the car significantly wider than it was when it started. So, Casio Cortez leading from Rene Rast and then Robin Freins. What's happened in turn one, uh, Stefan? Is it you on your own or? No, I break too early. Ah, Stefan being very honest there. Okay, makes sense. And uh, not. Uh, dropping somebody else in it and there we can see in replay it was a scary moment but well held through the gravel here's Robin then oh Casio sorry that sorry my fault a brilliant move around the outside at Paddock Hill and 
Rene getting all locked up there and in all sorts of trouble. <laughs> I know it doesn't doesn't help you, but. Ah, oh, Rene then back to P5 now, but he will come again. There is still time in this Q race. You were always fast in and slow out, but this time you were slow in. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> too, too slow. <laughs> I was surprised, sorry. Uh, so Cassio's a surprise catching Rene out. Rene making contact, Cassio and Rene uh, then through the gravel. What does that mean? Robin Frines leads. P2 being contested with Björn Skotka and uh, Stefan Vashau. Björn Skotka with that P2. Stefan Vashau is P3. That was a nice hit, Stefan. Thank you. <laughs> so I got some speed. <laughs> and here is Acasio in P4. Rene Rast, of course, with a penalty following his barge on the back of... Uh, that was not nice. Acasio Cortez. So, uh, plenty of action and uh, plenty of... Yeah. Contact as always in our hashtag race home events. So Björn Skodka back to P3. Stefan Vashau now has that P2 place. You trained too much branched head, did branch heads, didn't you? Stefan? No. no. You are, yes, of course. Ah. Detective. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Uh, some conversations going on about who has got the most experience here at Brands Hatch and Bjorn now. Maybe maybe we, we, we will try to, to catch Robin. Didn't we? Should we? With a perhaps opportunity here. Stefan? Let's do it. Yes, okay. Let's, let's follow me. Stay online. Uh, just follow me, but stay online if you could, please. So Stefan and Bjorn then with a dual effort here to try and get on terms with Robin Frines, who is currently leading. and. Best of luck with that because he's got 3.3 uh, seconds of advantage up the road. And oh, the Phoenix driver running just a little bit wide, but uh, saving it nicely and stays in that P2 position with uh, Björn Skodka uh, just a couple of car lengths behind in that P3 place. And Björn Skodka then also running just a bit wide uh, across the uh, curbs, but also managing to hold on to it. Through clear ways now, then the uh, final turn before the uh, timing line approacheth. And therefore, just one more lap for this dual effort from P2 and P3 to try and get on terms with uh, Robin Freins, who is uh, leading the race. So Freins P1, Stefan Vashau P2, Björn Skodka P3, Cassio Cortez P4, and Rene Rast, as we can see now, uh, lumbering around in that uh, P5 position. And, going for a little rally cross move across the gravel also. So there is Casio Cortez making his way through Graham Hill Bend now. And every driver using that runoff area. Here is Bjorn Skodka chasing down. Stefan Vashau under the bridge they go through Hawthorne Bend now onto the Derek Milner Strait heading towards turn number six, which is the Westfield Bend before the famous Dingle Dell here at the uh, Brands Hatch GP circuit. Stefan Vashau then with lots of trophies on display and here is Robin oh, Freins. No. Oh no! Oh, what a pity. That sounds bad news for Stefan Vashau because Björn Scott is up to P2. Stefan Vashau pointing in the wrong direction and that allows Cassio Cortez to go through to pick up that P3 place. So Robin Freins has crossed the timing line in replay then. Stefan just gets the back end of the car onto the grass, makes contact with the Armco, and it's all over for a virtual podium. It's P1, Robin Freins, P2, Bjorn Skotka, P3, Casio Cortez. Well done, Robin Freins. Back in Brands Hatch and in your Q2, a very dominant win, but the overtaking getting to the lead happened at Paddock Hill Bend. How, how did you see it from your cockpit? What happened there on the end of the first lap? Um, well, Rene was uh, was battling for lead, and uh, they touched each other, each other. So had a little little crash, and saw the opportunity to basically take the lead from there. Because I think overtaking here it's quite difficult, um, especially with Rene, because he was blocking very nicely. Um, but well, since I got the lead, I, I was I had a free track and slightly pulled away at the end. Ah, oh, well done, Robin. So you think track position is? Uh... That's the name of the game to name of the game to win today. Uh, I think so because uh, Brands Hatch is it's never an easy track to overtake there. So um, I didn't really check out how the slipstream really works because I was always behind Rene and Rene was behind the leader. So um, well, we need to see how how much uh, slipstream has effect on on the race. 
Well done. Well done and good luck further on. Cassio Cordes from Brazil. Uh, welcome to the series and you had pole position. You were leading the first lap when you then had a little contact together with, uh, with René Rast uh, in Paddock Hill Bend. So uh, that's the welcome you get from, from us here in, in, in Europe. You are running a very uh, nice TV show with uh, Rubens Baichello in Brazil. And we have, of course, met briefly during my career when we, are, when we were around in sports cars. So um, how do you see this virtual e-gaming uh, progressing and how do you feel to be part of, uh, of Race at Home? Uh, it was great fun. Uh, I guess I got my welcome to DTM moment right from Rene. But uh, honestly, uh, Paddock Hill is a, is a bastard of a corner and I was being very, very conservative there. So I guess it's one of the rare cases that uh, the guy who hit from behind it was not at fault. I guess I, I break super, super early. And you can do a lot worse than saying, uh, you know, Rene Rast pushed me out when we were battling for the lead. So it's a good story anyway. And uh, in terms of uh, the gaming world, it's, it's super cool because in our show, Acelerados, uh, even though Rubens is a massive fan of sim racing, uh, we hadn't really gotten around to, to uh, bringing it as a subject to, to the show before the, the pandemic. And now it's really boomed overall here in Brazil. Uh, we are taking part in, in, in taking part in various championships and it's become uh, a topic for our show. So uh, we really hope that, uh, we really expect this to, to continue after, after the, the pandemic. Hopefully it will end soon, but it's great to see sim racing really getting its day in the sun. And we ourselves uh, got sort of pushed into it and I'm loving it. Yeah, well done, Cashew. And uh, now in the meantime, you can change the P1 to P3 because that's where you finished in Q2. Yeah. And uh, yes. good luck with, with further progress, obviously. Thank you and all the best. Cool, thanks. Yeah, this of course was with a little bit help of Rainy Rust, his <laughs> position change. And a big fan of sim racing nowadays is also Nico Müller, our championship leader. And yeah, he's leading the championship, Audi sports team at Sportsline is leading the championship thanks to Nico and Robin Freins. And he explains to you why he's not here today. Hi guys, it's Nico. I'm sorry that I cannot be there for race 7 of the Race Home Charity Racing Series. Uh, yeah, we'll miss the battles out there, we'll miss the good show. Hope uh, Kelvin will take good care of my car. Have a good one, man, and uh, score some good points for Opt, please. Uh, yeah, enjoy the show, and I'm already looking forward to be back uh, next time out. And uh, yeah, see you soon. We're missing you already, Nico, but uh, Kelvin van der Linde, a good substitute for you. There's Mikael Nemas, who goes from uh, P5. Kelvin van der Linde goes from P4. Ahead is uh, Bettini Schuller, P3. Andreas Zerch is uh, P2. And Roland Zumsander will be going from pole position. That's P1 on the grid. It's a powerful grid for this uh, Q3 race. There's no question about that. The pressure mounting on our pole sitter. And uh, this is Kelvin van der Linde. Surely Kelvin van der Linde going before the lights have gone green. And that's uh, bad news for Kelvin van der Linde then, who doesn't get the best possible start as a consequence. Roland Zumsander leads going through Paddock Hill Bend and up towards uh, Druids now. A three-way fight going on behind though. And uh, that's a very, very good move up the inside from Bettina Schurler. Mikael Nemas already on the uh, back of the car of Andreas Zerch. On board with uh, Mikael Nemas now. He's running in P4. Zerch is P3. Little mistake there. That could open up an opportunity here to Mikael Nemas to get the uh, wind shadow along the uh, Hawthorne Hill straight. But no. Gonna have to outbreak going through Hawthorne Bend, which is really, really difficult. But he's done it. Brilliant move from Mikael Nemas up to P3. He anticipated that perfectly and did a very good job in execution. That was the move of the uh, day so far, I think. Here is Bettina Schola then running in uh, P2, but certainly chasing Roland Zumsander. Have you noticed how quiet Team Radio is when the Audi DTM stars are not on the grid? Just saying. 
So Bettina Schuller then, we watch as we stay on board and she's uh, narrowing that gap down to Roland Zimzander who leads as they cross the timing line. Bettina Schuller P2 and Mikael Nemes, a real danger man, running in P3. Good entry to Paddock Hill from Bettina Schuller as they come uphill now. Hillwood Hill dives to the inside of Roland Zimzander. Around drew it, another brilliant overtake. Well done, Bettina. That really was a joy to watch. So P1 now with Bettina Schuller, who's leading Roland Zumsander. That was a very fair and fine overtake that came from uh, Bettina. As uh, they both now, Bettina and Roland, head up towards Hawthorne Hill. Underneath the bridge they will go. Mikhail Nima still in P3. Roland uh, fancy his chances at coming back here at uh, Bettina Schuller, but Bettina is uh, making sure that every uh, single centimetre of tarmac is full of her light blue Audi e-tron Vision Gran Turismo car. So four tenths, just three tenths now as Roland carries a little bit too much speed and ends up on the grass and the gravel, and Mikhail Nemus reacts. Holds on to the car nicely, and of course that elevates Mikhail Nemus up into that P2 position, and Andreas Search has been able to benefit also, and he moves up to P3 following that uh, small error from Roland Zumzander. So Bettina Schuller then has got something of a comfortable margin now in the lead, and uh, this Q race going so, so quickly. Mikhail Nemus now the uh, fight is on, though from that P2 position as we watch Andreas Zerch then, who's running in uh, P3. So Schola, Nemas and Zerch. What a good showing from our RCCO racers. Doing a very good job here in uh, Brands Hatch and providing some uh, spectacular racing for us to enjoy as part of the uh, hashtag Race Home Series. Bettina Schola, cool as a cucumber, uh, with a good margin of protection between P1 and P2. So Bettina Schola then, just nailing every apex and making it look very, very precise. Mikhail Nemas chasing. Andreas Zerch chasing Mikhail Nemas, but not quite close enough. Mikhail then bottoms out the car then through the uh, slightly bumpy parts of this uh, Brands Hatch GP circuit. As you can see, he's also taking the perfect lines here in his quest to get on terms with Bettina Schuller, who has a margin of some uh, three seconds. Clear ways, and when the drivers cross the timing line, it will be the final lap in this Q race. This is Kelvin van der Linde running in uh, P4 for Ab Sports Line on behalf of Nico Muller, who's uh, missing from this uh, Brands Hatch GP round of our race home series. So Kelvin van der Linde then Heading up towards uh, Druids now. Or oh, puts the power down and heads down towards Graham Hill Bend, which is exactly where Andreas Zerch has just exited. As they head for the final time in this uh, Q race up towards the uh, left-hander, which takes them towards Hawthorne Hill. On board with Andreas Zerch then, running in that uh, P3 place. Mikhail Nemas P2, Bettina Schola P1. Andreas then working hard with the controller, as you can see, and Mike Rockefeller demonstrating just how difficult it is to be pinpoint accurate with the controller rather than the steering wheel. So Andreas Search doing a very creditable job. Uh, Mikhail Nemas also doing a creditable job, but has not been able to get onto the back bumper of Bettina Schola, who has one turn to do before the finish line. And Bettina Schola will win at Brands Hatch, a brilliant race win. Congratulations, very clean race. Guys. Very nice. Great job. Congratulations, Bettina. Thank you. Bettina Schola then is the race winner. Well done, Bettina. You put in a very nice drive and a very deserved victory after maybe the favorite, as we heard uh, Scott Kier, uh, mentioned before, Kelvin van der Linde made a jump start. How do you feel being first of the Q3? Very surprised, to be honest. I did not expect finishing first. As you said, Kevin was the favorite, so I was just, I didn't have any ex expectations when I entered the race. So I'm, I have to say, I'm really surprised. But you have done very well in the former, but this is your first victory. And it's a circuit where it seems track position is very important. So when you first got into the lead, 
you never look back. So uh, well done and good luck on your progress, Bettina. Thank you, John. Congratulations to Bettina, the first, I think, lady victory in a Q race and proceeding directly into the semi-final. It's the first time for her in the semi-final. And we have another lady in the field. Maybe she can make it as well. In Q4, she has a chance as any guest driver who's entering our race home series. And we have seen a lot of cool race drivers, guest drivers so far. They are an inherent part of hashtag race home. The fans as guest starters racing against the Audi DTM factory drivers. Every week, there's a new chance for them to be part of the charity racing series. By entering the design contest with their own designed livery, they have the chance to be on the grid and race against the Audi factory drivers. And they have proven to not only design good-looking liveries, but also to be very quick in the virtual racing cars with victories in Spa and Monza. And here's the good news. Three more races means three more chances for you to be on the grid and challenge the Audi DTM drivers for victory. Mayumi Chan, welcome, uh, welcome to join the race at home and uh, congratulations on your Thank design you. winning. You, uh, you won a very nice design car, beautiful green. What inspired you in the design? Was it the beautiful Mount Fuji in the background or what was your inspiration for joining? My inspiration, American comics, this car design. Okay. Because uh, quarantine, the coronavirus, really feeling bad, mm, feeling sad. Because I want to, you guys, feel Genki, feel happy. Super Genki. Super Genki, yeah. Mm -hmm. I draw this car. I hope Mina Genki. Yes, I hope you will win and you will continue and have a good race in the final, hopefully. So, uh, Gambate Kudasai. Hi, Arigato Gozaimas. Mina san Gambate. Your school, Anagashimas. Hi, Arigato Gozaimas. Thank you, guys. Fish pass. Oh, really? Let's start. In red at the back. At the regular DTM drivers, mostly a team radio preamble ahead of. Always at the back of the grid. <laughs> this Q4 race. <laughs> Uh, Jamie Green going right from the back of the grid. Well, I hope, Jamie, that you do manage to uh, get going. Bjorn Skotka goes from pole position. Alongside is the very dangerous Mikael Nemas, I would suggest. And the cars are released then for this Q4 race as they head towards Paddock Hill. Hi, Reddy. Hello. Oh, oh my Rockefeller got all locked up and then... Come on, Kelvin, go. ...made contact. I've got some traffic here, boy. Oh, dear. A dear as well. And I'm pretty sure he made contact with Casio Cortez uh, going into uh, the Paddock Hill bend. <laughs> Ready? It's like bowling. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Just do the rest like that, please. Uh, the hashtag race home 10 pin bowling contest then. Mikel Nemus, I said he would be dangerous, didn't I? Watch out, Thomas, I'm on your left. Yes, I see you. Leave me enough room. Left. Oh, yeah, thanks. Good observation from Thomas Vogt then, who knows that Jamie Green is coming through. Yeah. Oh, no. Jamie. <laughs> I didn't touch you. Nope. <laughs> Honest. It was my own. Uh, no contact whatsoever, and uh, Thomas then holding his hands up as we watch uh, Mikael Nemas here leading the race. There's Mike Rockefeller using that controller in P3 at the moment. Nice and... exit, eh, Kevin? Huh? And then behind them, all sorts going on in this, the uh, longest race, the Q4 race, and the biggest grid of cars contesting this uh, Brands Hatch GP circuit. For the honours of... Hi, mate. 
<laughs> of course, I'm flying in the gravel. Making it into the what's happened to you? Uh, semi-final and then the uh, super final shootout. Bjorn Skotka, P2. Mikael Nemus under a bit of pressure from Scotty now. <laughs> hey, read me! No, 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 no! No, 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 no! Wait! There was somebody else involved. Uh, as I said... Jamie. I don't know. You went a bit wide, boys. All sorts going on behind our... Uh, Leaders between Rennie Rast and Jamie Green and Roland Zumsander and anybody else that would like to join that party. Uh, in the meantime, Bjorn Skodka, in his quest to get on terms with Mikael Nemas, of course, has got to think about defending from uh, Mike Rockenfeller. So Bjorn there really concentrating very hard, holding on to this uh, P2 position, but he knows he's under threat from uh, Mike Rockenfeller, who, though, is in unfamiliar surroundings for this particular race at his uh, parents' home and using a controller as well, but doing a very, very good job. On board with uh, Mike Rockefeller now, chasing down Scotty, then in P2. Across the uh, start finish line now. I'm waiting for you again. And heading towards the uh, Paddock Hill Bend. It's like dropping off a cliff when you go down there. And Mike Rockefeller does it very, very well indeed, chasing after Scotty and also Mikael Nemas. Mikael Nemas, I think, now his uh, margin between himself and uh, P2 has come down considerably. Uh, Jamie Green a bit wayward but holds on to that uh, P4 position following his uh, earlier bad luck. And uh, P4, Jamie will be uh, thinking, I'm going to at least get a podium out of this. Still a lot of racing to be done before we reach the conclusion of this uh, Q4 race. Mikhail Nemes leads and there is uh, Mikhail Nemes then but as I mentioned, I think Scotty is getting closer. And it's going to be a three-way fight for P1 in a moment. And Mikhail Nemes is going to be under real pressure from not only Scotty, but also Mike Rockefeller. On board with uh, Scotty then in that P2 place. Holding on to the car and chasing after Mikhail Nemes. Jamie's coming to the party. Boys, boys, boys. <laughs> So it will become a four-way fight. Oh man, I'm just trying to hang on. And Jamie Green is right behind my Rockefeller. <laughs> Ooh, Rene, what was that? <laughs> a brake failure. Oh, oh, oh. Rene suffering once again. The brake didn't work. But we stay. Same for you, huh? With this four-way fight. Was in the middle of the road suddenly. <laughs> For P1, Scotty and Mikel Nemas, Jamie Green and Mike Rockefeller. Jamie Green on the outside of Mike Rockefeller. Goes through. Great move from Jamie Green up to P3. Well done. Jamie Green joins the fun. Up to third position <laughs> on his home turf. Yeah, Jamie, clean the road in front, please. Yeah, come on. Give us an answer, Rocky. <laughs> I'm trying, I tell you. I'm trying. And Mike is doing his level best here. Michael oh. Whoa! Oh! Scotty! Whoa! Oh! Scotty! Yeah, Scotty, this was forcing somebody off the track, eh? Two cars. Oh, Scotty is going to be in trouble with uh, race director Frank Beeler, no still question. Still four laps to go. Indeed, Jamie, still yeah. four laps to go. Come oh, on, yeah. sir. Go, Rocky, go! Yeah, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Various replays. <laughs> Sorry, Thomas, you were durchsichtig. Alles gut, fahr vorbei. I don't know, you were durchsichtig and then you weren't more. It was certainly a hairy moment. And this, Rene Rast then, uh, just dodgems with uh, Thomas Vogt. Meantime, yeah. Mike Rockenfeller. Did I get a penalty? <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> One uh, second. Seemingly uh, back to P3 right. and uh, being chased down now by Stefan Vachau who we are on board with. So Mike Rockenfeller really hammering his controller. That's the sound that you can hear. Try to. Scotty, we are both together, right? Stefan Vachau goes through on Mike Rockefeller. Mikael Nemus continuing to lead the race. And here comes Mike Rockefeller trying to win that P3 place back. We're uh, waiting to see what uh, penalty will be awarded to Bjorn Skotka. Uh, following that uh, incident we saw earlier on. Scotty, why are you not waiting, by the way? 
<laughs> Scotty, yeah. why are you not waiting, by the way? Come on, you've got to play the game here. You have to wait a long time, by the way. <laughs> it's quite a long time. It's, it's, but it's Q4, Rocky. He has no ah, yellow okay. yet. Huh? Mm. Oh. Ah, yes. Oh, a very probably, good point, Thomas. Okay. Of... So he's trying. Oh. To... It's okay. Oh. He should he oh, fuck. Forgive uh, the language. Beep. <laughs> <laughs> Mikael Nemas, P1. Scotty is uh, P2. Oh, where has this uh, race gone? The remainder of this lap plus. <laughs> Two more. <laughs> Hi, for now. <laughs> a wind shadow man he is a leading currently. Mikhail Nemas. Oh. Uh, Jamie Green, P7. Roland Zumsander ahead of him is uh, running in uh, P6. And this is Jamie Green, the British star on British turf here in Brands Hatch. Uh, somewhat gifted an opportunity there, however has to take to the grass and that will cost him some valuable time. So Bjorn Skodka then, here is Mike Rockenfeller, uh, P4. We'll give you the uh, full rundown in uh, just a moment of uh, who's doing what and where. It is uh, now Bjorn Skodka almost taking the lead. Mikhail Nemus has got it back. So Mikhail Nemus P1, Bjorn Skodka P2. P3 is with uh, Stefan Vashau and the uh, best of our Audi DTM stars. He's Mike Rockefeller, who's currently running in P4, ahead of Andreas Serge. Roland Zumsander, Cassio Cortez, P7. Rene Rast is P8. So we have still two more laps left to run in this uh, Q4 race. We're watching Mikael Nemas now, who thus far has been able to defend from uh, Scotty, who is trying to wrestle away that... He is breathing. <laughs> yeah. Wait a bit. That P1 place, but has thus far been unable to do so. Mikhail Nemas uh, defending his uh, P1 position very well. Rocky, do you see anyone? No. Oh. In, front, in front of you? No. Nope. Uh, Rocky very much out on his own at the moment. I don't know why, but Stefan, nobody's doing any mistakes. It looks like they know that the top three are enough. <laughs> Some races are going. We have done a race in Brand Chats a couple of weeks ago, so maybe that helped. See, there you go. Uh, across the uh, timing line and to, to start the last lap in this uh, Q race, Mikhail Nemas, Björn Skodka, Stefan Vashau. There is uh, Mikhail Nemas in that P1 position, Björn Skodka, P2, Stefan Vashau, P3. As I mentioned, the best of the Audi DTM stars is Mike Rockefeller running in P4 ahead of Andreas Search and then it's Roland Zumsander, Casio Cortez, and Rene Rast. So a great race for the RCCO drivers. Rene, are you getting lapped? And maybe Mike could do with some help. Ich? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe so. No. No, I didn't know because I thought because uh, Scotty was I thought talking to you, which I didn't get. I also didn't get what he said, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> because if you are, maybe you can hold him up a bit. <laughs> I can if you want. <laughs> How much you pay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, no. You can see there that Thomas Vogt was acting sort of an agent, oh, yeah. really, uh, between Rene Rast and uh, my rock and fella. However, I think it's all going to be too late because the top three are at clear ways now, heading towards the timing line. Mikel Nemas is going to be race winner. Woohoo! For the race, guys. P2 is Scotty. P3, Stefan Vashau, the best of the Audi DTM stars, is going to be this man, uh, Mike Rockenfeller, who will be able to cross the line in P4. So, P3, Vashau. P2, Bjorn Skotka. But the race winner is Mikael Nemas. Well done, sir. Congratulations, Wind Shadow Man. Michael Nemas, another win for you and uh, a great progress. A lot of things happening. How, how, what, what unfolded? A lot of things happening behind you. Were you aware of that? Yeah, I could see it in the mirror and uh, there was no possibility to, to get a gap between the next car and I saw that everybody was coming in the wind shadow and uh, tried to make my, my life a little bit harder and always uh, after turn four on the straight up the hill, Scotty was... Uh, 
coming to my side, by, but I uh, stood inside, so there was no possibility for him to to overtake, and I also tried not to to touch him anyhow. So yeah, I I just tried to manage and to bring it home. So one, two, three in this seat was uh, computer specialists, not really racing drivers. Uh, is that uh, the breakthrough for you guys here? Uh, I, I think one reason is that some of the guys here did a race a few weeks ago here at Brands Hedge, so they had an, an advantage uh, to, to know the track and yeah, I think that's it. And here you just have to be one, one time next to the track and you are not able to close the gap. When you yeah, are not trying to win shadow, important. then yep. it's difficult. <laughs> yeah, track position is important. Good luck in your progress so far. Thank you, Tom. Well Michael. So a lot of drivers from the RCCO eSports series for the first time in the semi-final. Let's see how this plays out. Before we go into the semi, let's have a look at a very, very close racing and photo finish we've seen during this season so far. Hashtag Race Home has been delivering exciting racing action right from the start of the charity racing series. While the championship is racing for a good cause, it's also providing us with thrilling wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing in each race. I think the, the semi-final in Monza, during two or three laps, we've been together with Robin and, and Nico, uh, really side by side, changing position. Had an amazing battle with Loic and Robin uh, for the whole six laps, pretty much. We were changing positions, uh, yeah, sector by sector, corner by corner nearly, banging wheels, having some slight contact. It was a lot of fun. I was racing against the fan. We were, we were side by side for basically the whole lap. So it was really fair, um, hard racing. Yeah, it, was, it was good fun. Just like tight battles, photo finishes are a part of what hashtag race home is all about. The smallest margin for victory we saw in race four in Inter Lagos, with just seven one thousandths between P1 oh. and P2. Can the drivers beat that? Let's find out. And now it's the semi final. What a lineup. From pole position, Robin Freins. P2, Bettina Schurler. P3, Loic Duval. P4, Mikael Nemas. Björn Skotka, P5. And Stefan Vachau will go from P6 on the grid. Four laps of the Brands Hatch GP circuit for our RCCO. Hashtag race home semi final. And here come the green lights. Robin Freins with a blistering start off the line. Pursued by Bettina Schuller. And also Loic Duval with a very good start could find himself in P2 as they head towards Druids. So Bettina Schuller tucks in into that P3 position. She will be under real pressure though from Björn Skotka. So on board with uh, Bettina Schuller then chasing down Loic Duval P2. Mikael Nemus now up to P4 getting past Björn Skotka and Stefan Vachau behind uh, Bjorn Skodka in P6. So for the first time of asking in this semi-final, they make their way on to the Grand Prix section of this wonderful circuit. How uh, much you pay, Robin, to make sure they don't catch you? Now there's a question. <laughs> yeah. I'm pushing, man. <laughs> Let's say I'm always good in our life. Which wasn't really comprehensively answered, was it? Uh, Mikael Nemas then, who is uh, currently running in P4, but he's got his uh, target sight on the Bettina Schola car that's running in uh, P3. Robin Frein's doing a very good job out front then. 2.2 uh, seconds worth of margin over Loic Duval, who's running in P2. Uh, then P3, Bettina Schola. What a great time she's had of it here at uh, Brands Hatch, that's for sure. Sorry, Michael. Got it. So um, lots of apologies going on and the cars really are all bunched together. So Freins, Duval and uh, Schurler, the one, two, three. Then Mikael Nemas and Björn Skotka and Stefan Vasha virtually all together. Bettina Schurler running just a little bit wide on the exit of uh, Graham Hill Bend through Cooper Strait and then the uh, left-hander which 
uh, takes us on to the uh, Grand Prix part of this circuit. And already the laps are getting away. Mikhail Nimas losing out to Stefan Vashau. Uh, Mikhail Nimas is uh, entry onto the uh, Grand Prix part of the track was not so brilliant and this is Scotty then who's running in P4 carrying a lot of speed here and too much speed and that means he's in the gravel but very quickly back out onto the tarmac once again but losing a couple of places <sighs> and some people put some pressure on themselves in the uh, needless to say <laughs> uh, Scotty yes. then uh, the pressure uh, playing on him Maybe I have to learn from you, Loic. <laughs> very cool. Loic does always look very cool, but underneath that cool exterior... Very cool, very relaxed. ...is that menacing desire to always try and win. But not very quick. However, he's only P2 at the moment, uh, because Robin Freins has got it all sewn up. This is Stefan Vashal then, who is uh, running in that P4 place, but he has Bettina Schöller. Lined up ahead, who's running in P3. What can Stefan Vashau do to get past Bettina Schuller as they make their way up towards uh, Hawthorne Hill? They will go underneath the bridge momentarily, running slightly downhill. Look to Val P2. Uh, Bettina Schuller chasing for all Bettina is worth. And Bettina has been really, really impressive here at uh, Brands Hatch. So Loic knows that he's under a bit of pressure here. and. Uh, Robin Freins is just escaping up the road with a margin of very nearly seven seconds, just over seven seconds now. Robin Freins doing a very good job, of course. Uh, Loic Duval not able to really get on terms with uh, Robin Freins because he's uh, conscious that he has to defend from Bettina Schuller and uh, Stefan Vachau. This is Bettina then. Through clearways and onto the start finish straight once again to start what will be the final lap in this uh, race home semi-final race from Brands Hatch. And Bettina now takes it up another notch, trying to pressure Loic Duval into a mistake. Loic Duval not for moving at the moment though. And of course, uh, Bettina got to be ever conscious of the fact that Stefan Vashau is just there, ready to bounce and pick up any pieces. And Mikel Nemas is not a long way behind either in uh, P5. So now, can Bettina Schuller get the draft off the back of the Loic Duval car? She takes a look at the inside. Loic makes the car as wide as possible to deny Bettina Schuller. Slightly better line from Loic through that turn than Bettina. But certainly going up to that turn, it looked like Bettina Schuller could get a run on Loic, but it wasn't to be done. Is she going to have to settle for P3? Robin Freins, look, already is heading towards the chequered flag. Nearly 11 seconds to the good over the rest of the pack. Um, and the Bremser. Well, for goodness sake, look grateful, Robin. Not for you, Michael, not for you. Uh, <laughs> Roy Duval, uh, P2, and Bettina Schuller takes her P3. Ooh, Bettina, that was close. That controller is tactic. You're waving. <laughs> no way by. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> good race, guys. Oh, good. Yeah, well done. Congratulations on a dominant win to Robin Freins, who uh, led away from a very good start and a very good opening lap. And we saw a nice fight with Loic Duval uh, and just in front of Bettina Schuller in the end and waving or weaving, let them continue deciding that. But um, Robin, you are definitely the favorite now going into the final. Uh, very easy win for you or did you improve lap by lap uh, today as you have not been tracking Brands Hatch Grand Prix track as the RCO oh. members were very, very strong until now? Well, yeah, of course, you're improving lap by lap a bit. Uh, the quickest lap I've done so far was actually the last one. Um, but obviously, starting from, from the front row, from pole, it's always easier to go in the first corner clean without uh, touching. And, and they were battling behind me. So it was uh, in that way, um, luck was on my side in this race. So let's see how the final goes. Yeah, see from your start position there. And uh, let's, let's see the final. And thank you to the RCSC O members who did extremely well. 
but lost out. So let's see if Audi Sport team up Sportsline can win again, this time courtesy of Robin Freins, or if Leuk Deval can give the first victory to Audi Sport team Phoenix. But before we see the super final, it's up to Robin Freins to show and explain us one lap of the track here in Brands Hatch. So start to finish, we go to turn one, we just go uphill a bit and then goes really downhill um, and then uphill again. So the car really goes to, to, to the suspension completely. Then you have the, one of the slowest corners of the track, turn two. Um, good exit is quite important. Then this corner is very tricky. Uh, personally, I found it one of the toughest corners on track. Goes a bit off camera as well. Um, turn four, long straight after this, so exit is very important. Has a bit of a banking halfway the corner as well. Um, then you go to the quickest part of the track, which I really enjoy. Uh, quick right hander here. Carry a lot of speed in, also some banking. Uh, this is very bumpy in real life. Then it goes downhill again. This next corner is completely blind, so you don't see the uh, curb or the apex at all. Uh, very tricky to go uh, offline here. And then this corner, the left hander, is uh, quite some banking, so you can carry quite some speed in. And then we're heading to the last corner already, with from from apex to to exit is going off camera again, so the car is getting uh, quite a bit light. Uh, which is not uh, easy to have a good exit. That's a lot for um, Brand Hatch. What a super final. Look at the fingers. <laughs> we have in prospect Robin Freins from pole position, Loic Duval alongside. It's a tussle between two of the biggest titans from the Audi DTM Works drivers. Robin Freins versus Loic Duval, who will be victorious in the one lap shootout super final. We're live from Brands Hatch. The cars are released. Loic Duval seemingly getting a little bit of wheel spin away from the start. Tries to put it up the inside of Robin Freins, but Robin Freins has already escaped up the road. So they head towards the Druids. For the one and only time of asking in this one lap shootout super final, Robin Fryens leads from Loic Duval, who we are on board with now, through Graham Hill Bend, turn number three here at the Brands Hatch circuit. Easy, Robin. Yes, come on, Robin, let's put a show on. Hey, I, I never had a win so far, so pressure's on, eh? So come on, Loic, you're gonna have to dig deep because there's gonna be no slowing down from Robin Fryens. So heading up through Hawthorne Hill now towards the right-hander, which is Hawthorne Bend, turn number five, onto the short Derek Milner straight. And then the sweeping right-hander Westfield Bend, which leads you on to Dingle Dell. No way, man. <laughs> Careful on your left. Careful on your left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Desperately trying to upset him. I have a spotter on my left here, so... so uh... But for the moment, nothing is budging Robin Freins. <laughs> And you can sense the frustration. On this tier. Loic Duval doing everything he can to try and find the pace, but Easy tiger. none is going to be enough. Robin Freins wins. Finally. Madre mia. I, I saved a new set for the final, so. <laughs> Finally, Robin Freins wins. Wow, well done, Robin. Your first uh, victory of, uh, of this season. You had a very good start and smooth turn one, smooth turn two, and then we saw Loic Duval closing on you into Graham Hill Bend, but washed out and started talking to you. The first victory must feel very nice. From there, it looked easy. Um, yeah, first victory, I was quite, uh, quite close a few times. Um, maybe it helps when Nico was not around for once. But um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed myself. Uh, Loic was playing some metal games at the end. <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was always fun driving with him, so it's a good day. On a weekly basis, how much uh, are you time are you spending in the simulator? You would think now, let's say, what in in these last two months. I mean, are you spending an hour a day, or is it more or less? Well, I well it depends which day. I mean, in the weekend, I'm I'm quite busy. I'm 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 on the sim a couple of hours, as I also do formerly uh, sim. So let's say. It starts from Wednesday, Thursday, where, where I really 
get going to practice for the uh, formal e race, and then afterwards I practice for for DTM and, and this. So uh, let's say from from Thursday to to Sunday, it's like a normal race weekend. I'm I'm every day on the sim for a couple of hours. You have to adapt to the different uh, sort of levels, the different paths you are running. Uh, is there a big, big difference uh, in that sense, or is it easy for you to adapt between Formula E, DTM to this uh, to the Gran Turismo here? It's it's really it's, for me it's completely different. Uh, obviously, on the Gran Turismo we we're running on PlayStation, and and with uh, with our factory running on computer, so. The way you 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 feel the the steering input is a bit different, but uh, as long as as you know how it works, I think you can adapt uh, adapt quite quite quickly on it. Yeah, because you saw uh, actually like the wild that didn't have a steering wheel uh, in his hands. Uh, that's something you have. Is that what you prefer, or or how how do you see it? Um, I think I prefer it. Yeah, because it's coming more natural then. Because the only thing we are doing is driving cars, and and you know with with the feet um, on power and braking, and and you, and you steer with a controller, you don't have the same feeling. Yeah, well done, congratulations, and uh, let's have a look at where you are in the points now, Robin. Yeah, second, no. Finally, the first victory for Robin Freins. It was overdue after his good start in Spa and Monza, where he just lost the Super Final. So he moved, of course, up to second position, right behind his teammate Nico Müller, who will be back next week racing with us. And Audi Sport team up Sportsline is now really on its way to clinching the team's title. We have still three races to go. We have seen the first victory of Robin. We have seen an impressive performance of Loic Duval, especially with the controller on this very, very difficult racetrack. And we have seen very, very strong performances of the fastest RCC so eSports Series drivers. So we are already looking forward to see you again next week after this cool race here in Brands Hatch. Thank you very much, Tom, for joining us again tonight. Bye bye. Uh, everything went really clean and clear. Um, no problems. Uh, only uh, one yellow card to give, to give away uh, for uh, Scotty. Um, I think everything else was uh, really running well, and uh, they were they were behaving well. Uh, at least I did not hear any other complaints. So from my point of view, a very nice event.